Today's topic is a sequence that appears in sunflowers, in seashells, and apparently in the mind of a murderer. But how did a mathematical pattern from 800 years ago become the key to a killing spree? Well, first, we need to discuss what this sequence is. It's known as the Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is really simple. You start with zero and one, and then you add the previous two numbers to get the next. So if we start, we have zero plus one equals one. Then we take one plus one equals two. And then we take one plus two, this equals three. And you do this, so on and so forth, to create the sequence. Now the person we call Fibonacci was actually called Leonardo of Pisa. He wrote about these very numbers in his book Liber Abaci in 1202, where he used the sequence to show the theoretical growth of the rabbit population. Although the sequence is attributed to Fibonacci, it's actually believed to have been known for well over a thousand years earlier. So while Fibonacci didn't invent the sequence itself, his work brought it to much wider attention in Europe. This seemingly simple sequence is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful mathematical sequences there is. Just take a look at this. If we take all of the numbers in the Fibonacci sequence and we square each of them, and then we begin to add them up in this pattern that we see here, can you spot the hidden Fibonacci numbers here? That's right, they're two Fibonacci numbers multiplied by each other. For example, let's take the first three squared Fibonacci numbers, so one plus one plus four, we get six. Now this is none other than two times three, which are these two Fibonacci numbers that we see here. Going one step further, we add the next square, which is nine, we get 15, which equals three times five, which are these two Fibonacci numbers here. And we can do this, so on and so forth, and the pattern continues. Some of you may have already guessed how this works, but to demonstrate it, I'm gonna show a beautiful illustration. Let's first start by denoting each of the square numbers by a literal square. So we start with a square of side one, and next to it, we put the next square, which is of size one. Below these two numbers, we put the next Fibonacci number, which is the square of side two. And then next to it, we put the square of side three, and so on and so forth. For this demonstration, we're going to stop at eight, just to show how it all works. Okay, so we can add the area of this by simply adding each of the squares up. So we have one squared plus one squared plus two squared plus three squared plus five squared plus eight squared, which is similar to what we saw previously, which would be one plus one plus four plus nine plus 25 plus 64. Now we know that this equals 104, but you might already notice that when we combine all of these squares together, it's formed a rectangle and the area of a rectangle is none other than the width times the height. So in this case, the height would be one plus two plus five, which is eight, and the width would be five plus eight, which is 13. And so here we have that the area of this rectangle is also eight multiplied by 13. This illustration is a beautiful way of being able to show something known as the golden ratio. Now, the clue is in the name, we're gonna take some ratios. So let's first start by taking the ratio between each of the successive terms in the Fibonacci sequence. So if we do one divided by one, we get one. If we do two divided by one, we get two. Let's do three divided by two. This gives us 1.5. Next, we do five divided by three. This gives us approximately 1.666. Now you might notice that this will converge to a specific number the further along we go in the sequence and the number that it stabilizes around is approximately 1.618. This is a number that has fascinated mathematicians, architects, and artists for years. The number itself is known as the golden ratio, and it's often denoted by the Greek letter phi. We can create something beautiful the more squares we add on to this illustration here. We can form what looks like a spiral. All we do is draw a quarter circle in each of the squares that appears in the golden rectangles. And this spiral here is known as the golden spiral. It's important to note that what we're seeing here is actually a sequence of circular arcs. So the shape is only an approximation to a true spiral. The type of spiral that it approximates is actually what is known as a logarithmic spiral. And such spirals are very common in nature. These spirals have the polar equation 
r equals a multiplied by e to the power b theta, where e is the base of the natural logarithm. The golden spiral is believed to have appeared in everything from the portions of the Parthenon to Renaissance paintings to spiral galaxies. Entire books have been written about its supposed connection to beauty, balance and harmony in nature and art. And some even claim it's wired into our brains that we instinctively find objects following the golden spiral more pleasing or perfect. Now of course these are all hypotheticals but they're still beautiful nonetheless. When you take something as naturally pervasive as Fibonacci and twist it into a murder plot, it instantly creates this sense that there's a hidden code, that behind the chaos there's some deeper order waiting to be discovered. And that's exactly what happens in Criminal Minds. The episode opens like many others, unsettling camera work, unsettling music, but the first thing that stands out is the visual obsession with spirals, portraits and classical art. From the very beginning, the visual language hints that there's a pattern hiding in plain sight. The killer, who in my opinion is dressed particularly fancy, has a pendant hanging from his neck, etched with the Fibonacci spiral. The perfect symbol for the meticulous pattern that is driving his deadly scheme. Each victim in the episode is part of a sequence. Of course, what sequence other than the Fibonacci sequence? The victims are abducted and killed according to the escalating intervals of the Fibonacci numbers. So we begin with one, two, three, and we start the episode with five currently held hostage. And if they don't find them in time, those five will also get killed. Now, while the team are investigating the daycare where the victims were taken, Reed notices something really strange. The toys themselves are arranged in a particular symbol. Do you recognise this symbol? It's none other than the golden ratio, phi. Not only this, but the team are also sent a live stream of the hostages from a web domain called goldenrat.net, which is another huge clue pointing back to the Fibonacci sequence. Now, something funny that people have pointed out is that clearly the domain .io must have already been registered because he used goldenrat.net instead of goldenrat.io, which would have literally spelled out golden ratio. Clearly that domain must have been registered already. Putting this all together, it finally clicks with the team. The numbers, the spiral pendant, the way that the toys were arranged, it's all a part of the same mathematical obsession. Using the spiral shape from the killer's pendant as a template, Reed overlays this Fibonacci spiral onto the map of the surrounding area, and that's when it becomes clear. The positions of previous abductions all line up along the curve, leading them to a single location, an isolated house where the victims were actually being held. The team, of course, are able to go to the house and rescue the hostages. Now, of course, while Fibonacci numbers have never been used in real life for murder that we know of, it's still a beautiful story and a beautiful depiction of how mathematics can be used in various different ways. The episode shows just how easily we can be captivated by the idea of hidden patterns governing even the darkest parts of human behaviour. Because at its core, the Fibonacci sequence reminds us of something deeply paradoxical. The same simple pattern responsible for the growth of flowers, seashells and galaxies can, in the hands of a storyteller, become the perfect blueprint for murder. Thank you so much for watching.